you're about to watch an extract about covalent bonding from one of my live TikTok lessons. So if you find it useful, make sure, hit that like button and now enjoy. Previously, we were talking about the transfer of electrons. Now we're looking at sharing electrons. So these are between the atoms that have got a mostly full outer shell and they just want to try and get one or two more in to share and then to fill that shell. So we're not looking at any transfer. It's a sharing of electrons. So we'll take from our last example, something like chlorine, okay? One chlorine atom has got two electrons in that first shell. It's got eight electrons in the second, and then it had seven in its outer shell, okay? That's chlorine's electron configuration. Cl on your periodic table, you see it as 35, 17. Okay, so that's what we've got going on for us. So electron configuration, two, eight, seven. Adds up to that 17, okay? But it's not happy. It doesn't have a full outer shell. So it wants to gain one more electron somewhere. However, if there's not something there that will immediately give an electron, it'll find another atom somewhere that it can just share an electron with instead. So we get another chlorine atom, for example, okay? So this chlorine atom, again, same structure, two in the first shell, eight in the second shell, and then I'm just gonna cross it over here. Now, same situation, this chlorine, I should actually have drawn this as dots, but anyway. This chlorine has got the same exact setup. It's got two in the first shell, eight in the second, seven in that third, okay? So it also doesn't have that full outer shell. But they're doing something really interesting here in that middle. This here is where they're sharing an electron each. So this chlorine is saying, look, you can have a part of my electron, and likewise, if you share a piece to me, I'll have part of your electron. So they're sharing instead. The way I always kind of picture it, and this is because I'm such a foodie, I always picture it as if you're trying to buy a pizza. If you've got four pounds or four euros and you're looking to buy a pizza and your friend happens to be there with you and they have either four pounds or four euros or whatever your currency is, if you combine your, your set of money together, you could buy a pizza together, but you have to end up sharing in order for that to happen. The same is happening with these non-metals. They're sharing electrons so they can both be happy in the end. So that's kind of the basics of it. Now this part here, okay, it's got one shared pair of electrons, one from each side. We call that a single covalent bond. Basically, one electron from each side, easy peasy, okay? There are scenarios where we have two or three sharing. We'll come to that in a second. But in every single one of these covalent bonds, you are looking at at least one electron from each side. You have to have one electron from each side, otherwise it's not a covalent bond. So we're gonna move on to something slightly more complicated. So I'm gonna give you an uh, example of methane, right? Really simple molecule, really what we call a simple covalent molecule. It's made up of carbon and it's made up of hydrogen. Carbon looks like this. It's got two electrons in that first shell and then it's got four electrons in its outer shell. So, take a wild guess at how many hydrogens you think we're gonna be bonding onto that carbon. We are looking at filling it with four hydrogens. So one hydrogen atom will come in here. So that'd be one, that would be two, three, and four. Okay, so that's where we get this molecule CH4, one carbon, which is your carbon there in the middle, and the four hydrogens, one, bonded on each one, okay? Each of those are a single bond. You could also represent it like this, where we've got a carbon and a single bond each way to a hydrogen, okay? So this one line, that one line represents a single bond. One single line, one single bond. That's what's happening inside here, okay? Let's make things a little bit more complicated. Let's introduce a double bond. So a double bond, very simple idea. One, one single bond, we're sharing one electron each. A double bond, we're sharing two electrons each. So we'll take something like oxygen. Okay, oxygen is 16, eight on the periodic table. So the eight tells us oxygen is gonna have eight electrons. So we're gonna draw one oxygen here. That's uh, two in its first shell. And this time I'm gonna just draw this a little bit funnily. One there, two there, three, four, five and six because that gives me my total of eight two and six eight okay but i'm shy two electrons from having a full outer shell so we get another oxygen it's got its first shell here one and two 
and then it's gonna have its second shell. Oh my God, worst diagrams ever. So I like PowerPoint, you don't mess up as much, but it's gonna put one electron in here, a second electron in here, third, fourth, fifth, and sixth. So in this scenario, it still makes up its eight, but if we have a look at how many electrons are within the area, what's actually being shared, that outside shell has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That oxygen is happy now, because it's got two electrons being shared with it, but it's also sharing two to the other one. So this other one here has got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. It's also happy, double bond, okay? So it's slightly different. You've got a double bond. And how we would represent that with our little sticks, we would go oxygen, double bond, oxygen, okay? Or you might see this as O2. All those three things are the exact same names. That's O2, that's O2, that's O2. The thing that we talk about all the time. If we were to hazard a guess what's happening with this one, N, N, one, two, three, which is also technically N2, could you guess how many electrons N2 is sharing if it's got three lines in between it? Yeah, someone's in there straight away. So we're gonna have three buttons inside in that nitrogen atom, and that molecule, sorry, where you've got one, two, three being shared by this nitrogen and one, two, three being shared back by that one. So the difference between an atom and an ion, an atom does not have any positive or negative charge on the outside. Their charges are balanced. The difference in an ion is that it's either after losing electrons, so they're after losing something negative, which makes them more positive, or they've gained something negative, which makes them more negative. In an exam, most of the time, they're actually only gonna ask you to fill that outer shell at the very end, because if you know how many should be in the outer shell, then you probably know how to fill the other shells beforehand. But generally, if you're someone who really struggles, always stick to the rule of you put two in that first shell, then you put eight in the second shell, and then you put up to eight in the third as well. If you're looking for the protons, the number that you have inside an element, you look at this number here, the smaller number on the periodic table. That's what we call the atomic number. So the atomic number is kind of like its ID. So if you were looking at like identifying an element, you would look for the number of protons it has because that never changes. We're able to change the number of neutrons because we've got isotopes, but if we change the number of electrons, we've got ions, which is what we're dealing with like in our ionic bonding but the proton number never changes. So that's its ID. Use that as the identification for your element, okay? So that's the smaller number. The bigger number, that tells you the mass of that element. So if we take carbon, carbon 12, that tells me that the mass of carbon is 12. But you're making that up from your protons and neutrons, basically the stuff that's in the middle of that element. That's the stuff that's giving it its mass. Respect up on the street.